Gentlemen, I am taking a break from the fight against the inequality of the masses and my latest draft of the second Communist Manifesto to talk about something much more important. Game performances and unfinished games. Yeah. We are doing this, understand? More specifically, the PC ports. For low BD prehistoric days where you would get your hands on a disc, being it full or a demo disc, that had the game that you wanted on it. If the game was trash, you knew that you could throw it into the sea, but if the port was good, then you knew that you had found gold and that your experience would be legendary. But once we all got past the age of 2007 and the X-Bone started shilling for online updates, the back and forth war of PC Master Race v console v studios being anti-consumer got severely more heated. On one end, you had PC gamers Helping for parts, building rigs that could fight guard into the attempt of playing Skyrim with 700 mods and getting that 16 times the detail. While on the other hand, you had console gamers arguing that the exclusives were superior and that the eye can't even see 16 frames per second, anyways. But in the background of all this constant bickering were publishers and at time developers that started sending us some early manufactured disc and preloaded files. And I do say preloaded. Hey man, can you? Be a bit quieter, I'm trying to slide into some DMs here. As I was saying, preloaded with some bullshit. Unfinished games that will make your PC feel like it had Parkinson's. And if the performances of a half-baked product weren't good enough, they also came loaded with some DRMs. Now, <clears throat> come here. While I'm a huge believer in the invigorating power of the sea shanties, I do not condone piracy, because I get it when a company blacklists some dum-dum from literally asking for the games to be pirated, then yeah, the they deserved it. it. Additionally, I am fine with a company engaging a little bit of trolling, like naming the noble steed of the game's protagonist Torrent, so that anybody googling for Elden Ring Torrents ends up getting a lot of horse pictures instead. And that to me is all fine. But what is not fine though is goddamn Codex de Nouveau No Crack No Virus, the digital age of gaming. Like when scientists were studying the corrupted blood plague in World of Warcraft to map epidemics IRL, they should have been studying this instead. Because in their attempt to stop the misdeeds of some internet goblins, these companies ended up creating an anti-cheat that literally made games worse. Since 2014, speed enthusiasts have made it their missions to catalogue the terrible performances that the Novo has wrought onto games. To what did they compare the results, you ask? Well, to the bloody same games, but cracked. Because this software is less likely to keep the cheats off ya, but more guaranteed to give you some tripophobia. Yes, I'm going to be talking about the anti-temper and anti-cheat interchangeably, because no matter the argument, both of these great firewalls from non-China have so many holes in them that they serve nearly Zero purpose. A great recent example of this has been with Resident Evil. Not the one with the girl with big titties, but the previous one with the girls, plural, with big titties. Damn! Where the glorious digital foundry did some tests comparing village with the virus and village without it, showing that the free version suffered from fewer frame drops than the infected one. Okay, I'm going to stop being so meta about it. Now, in all fairness, these drops were at best only a few frames, but at the worst, they were literally killing the frames. And that's just Resident Evil. When we look at other games, we... <laughs> the f What? What the fuck is this? And it really hurts to say because I had recently started to regard Catcom as the king of remakes. So when we look at it, we had Dead Space, aight, Demon Souls, I hear ya, Like a Dragon, go on, The Last of Us, it will get the fuck out. But when it came to Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, and 4, oh my god, these games were much more than just remakes. They weren't just beat for beat recreation of what came before, nor just graphical update that looked too good. What? But they hit just the right spot. Maybe RE3 not so much, but the point is these games were designed to be functionally good, even those that are sequels like the recently review-bombed Jedi Survivor, an actual sequel that doesn't require you to start from scratch and actually expands on the mechanic and story of the game. And I would love to sing praises about it, but when the studio abuses my expectation for it by one doing a little bit of an effort by making a remake that made me think, oh maybe they're on the right track now, and then BAM! Forced me to download a game for god knows how many hours and stole it, tried to play the damn thing and realized that it was bad, just to receive another massive patch that raised the performance from 15 to freaking 35 FPS. 
Somebody fucking kill me. And then has the gall to gaslight me into believing that he has something to do with my system. It sort of makes me mad. I know that I shouldn't be, but I am frankly baffled that some studios are so anti-consumers that instead of spending money on, let's say, QA testers, who I'm damn sure are working on more than just Apex Legends, they decide instead to fire them and mark the games as known shippable. Well, that's fucked up in all kinds of ways now, isn't it? And I know that I've been LARPing for the glorious PC enjoyer so far, but goddammit if it isn't also affecting the consoles. Xbox, PS5, the Soulja Boy console. Okay, sorry about that. They are actually recommending players to run the game on quality mode. Cause like my racist uncle will say, they know that that shit ain't cutting it. But forget about the CPU and GPU usage, the network usage, the frame rate drops. That in the past has forced the likes of Tekken 7's producer to say, nah fam, it has got to go. We are talking about something that is there to prevent you from using the product that you bought effectively. Imagine constantly having to be online to play your game. Or not being able to install your game on more than two devices at the risk of a ban. Like, I bought the game, damn it, just let me do with it whatever I want. The age of the DRM has led to so many review threats being rather than this drunken cop's political alignment, making what would have otherwise been good games into unoptimized messes that deserve to be banned to the shadow realm. This is the reason why folks do consider piracy as a necessary evil, because DRMs are just evil. Now, of course, there are instances where developers have given up on the nouveau or the likes of them after a crack or even without the bloody thing being subject to the internet's hammer, like with Mass Effect's Legendary Edition. Yet still, when some of the biggest title of the year have come out as broken masses, The Last of Us, We're Long Fallen Dynasty, Calistro Protocol, yeah, I'm gonna slide that one in here. For spoken, I mean, come on. And of course, not to be forgotten on the other side of the aisle, Bethesda and Redfall, what are you doing to Arcane Studio, dude? This all speaks to a bigger problem than just DRMs. Because since some of these companies only care about generating as much profit as possible, they won't shy away from cutting some corners, forcing crunch on their staff, overhyping their unfinished games, or even gaslighting their consumers into believing that their machines. Do you say machines? Shut the fuck up! The machines are to blame. Now, all we have to do. Um, Are you planning on rallying gamers together so that they would spend money on the little guy, that being the indie developers, and boycott the big studios as well as the hardware developers since they are the ones who are getting these things implemented in the games? Um, no. You've been listening to way too much communist propaganda. No, wait, we, we have to just end the deal here. No, wait, we need to stand together. No, but for the game. No, just stop.